Uh, uh, let me start from a few words about uh, studying of anarchism. I'll try to be very short and brief, but I think this short for what is necessary uh, when we speak about uh, myth about uh, when we speak about Cossack myths and when we speak about historical myths in political practice of uh, Ukrainian anarchists at the beginning of 20th century. For a long time, history of anarchist movement as a political ideology and uh, political practice was uh, in the shadow uh, in Soviet historiography. The last, uh, in, uh, the last interpreted uh, such political movement as, uh, as an example, one, but, uh, no, uh, but not last, uh, example of uh, so-called Petit Bourgeois uh, movement. When we speak about uh, studying of anarchism abroad, not in Soviet Union, we have the situation that many researchers outside the Soviet Union has a problem with uh, access to the uh, Soviet archives for a long time. Many of them sympathized uh, to the anarchist ideology. Some of them were members of figures of different left-wing uh, uh, movements in, uh, in uh, Western or Central Europe. That's why they have some stereotypes, and these stereotypes were very close to the uh, interpretation of Soviet Union uh, historians. Uh, liberalization in the uh, second half of 1980s in Soviet Union uh, was a time when so-called uh, white pages of history start to complete in a very, uh, very strange way. But it's very interesting and very, very important that many topics like the history of World War II, uh, history of political repressions and so on, uh, became open for researchers. But at the same time, history of anarchism and anarchism stayed on the periphery of uh, studying. Maybe we have only one exception, and this exception is strictly connected with the studying of Ukrainian National Revolution, time 1917-1920s. And it's a topic of a uh, very interesting uh, event and very interesting moving, movement during this revolution. It mean, I mean uh, so-called Machno movement or Machnovshino. Uh, for maybe 70 years during Soviet period, Machno has a very strict image, sometimes uh, of mentally ill men with a criminal behavior, and uh, rather closer to the bandits or criminals than a political leader. In time of uh, independent Ukraine, if we mean, uh, for example, 1990s, the situation was uh, opposite. From an uh, anarchist leader, he became uh, maybe a fighter for Ukrainian independence. It's very interesting to see how, for example, in uh, Ukrainian historical uh, <coughs> journal, a changed mind about Makhno. We have a few researchers who wrote story about Makhno in the end of 80s as a uh, political adventurer but in the middle of 19th, he became a father Makhno or Batko Makhno as a leader of Ukrainian revolution. Uh, for many people, uh, Makhno became a symbol of Ukrainian, but not only Ukrainian, but also e and European uh, anarchism. But at the same time, uh, one of the central part of one of the central element uh, for uh, explanation, what is it? Machnovshina became a so-called Cossack sentiment. Uh, let me give only one example. Uh, you can see photo from the August uh, 2006. Uh, 2006. Uh, it's a photo from the first uh, literary and art festival, uh, Independence Day, with Machno in a small town Hulaipole. We, uh, this town was a center of so-called Machnovshina. And you see uh, one of the headliners of this festival, Sergei Jordan, maybe 
the most uh, famous uh, Ukrainian poet and writer, if we speak about current moment. And uh, symbolically, the disease uh, festival operated in category of so-called Cossack Republic, when they try to explain what is it to be Mahno. And very interesting, this photo, uh, photo uh, it cover of a uh, book of Sergei Zadan, Anarchy in the Ukraine, metaphoric like a sex uh, pistols, anarchy in UK, but he transformed in the Ukraine. And he's standing between two tombs, it's the tombs of two brothers Machno. Uh, nobody of them were members of anarchist movement, nobody of them uh, were, um, was a member of anarchist organizations. Uh, they uh, became victims, maybe uh, victims, one of them of Austrian German troops who came to Hulaipola in 1918, another was uh, killed by uh, by soldiers of so-called voluntary army, uh, so-called Dinikinsi, in 1919. But they became symbols of honor. And uh, uh, in my presentation I want to, to speak about period before 1917 and I want to speak or to find uh, answers uh, for two or three questions. First of all, could we find roots of Cossack myth in social nature and social profiles of Ukrainian anarchists before 1917? Also, I want to, to understand and to present where any confirmation of Cossack myth and Cossack sentiments existed in anarchism propaganda and anarchist agitation before 1917. Or maybe is such Cossack myth only myth of uh, 1990s. So uh, about myths, it's also very interesting when we speak about Cossack myths and anarchism. It's a memorial tape near so-called oak or oak of death. It's a place where uh, Nestor Machno became a father Machno. It's a legend that before. Uh, great battle. He received this. Uh, uh, he received this title from other other fighters because nobody uh, know what they have to do. Only Machno uh, proposed a way how they can struggle and how they can win. And very interesting that uh, uh, description that this oak was a witness of Cossack epoch, Moscow colonization. Uh, Soviet Empire and the birth of independent Ukraine. So before uh, before Machno was only Cossack epoch and Moscow colonization. So no. When we speak about anarchism, Russian anarchism or anarchism in Russian Empire, we speak about uh, three capitals of such movement when we speak about time before 1917. It's very interesting that two of them were on territory of modern Ukraine and two of them were on the territory of south of modern Ukraine. We can notice it. Uh, first of all, we speak about Odessa, Yekaterinoslav, nowadays Dnipro, and uh, another, the first capital of uh, Russian anarchism is Bialystok. Uh, previously, it's Hrodno uh, Governorate or northwest part of uh, Russian Empire. Uh, when we speak uh, about scale of anarchist activity in the beginning of the 20th century, we have such statistics that uh, near more than 200 anarchist groups activity in uh, 155 cities of Russian Empire and we have approximately 7,000 members of uh, anarchist circles and organizers. Approximately one half it's a all organization which operated on territory of modern Ukraine, dominantly in the south of Ukraine. When we speak about social profile of members of such organizations, <coughs> we have such results. Sources of this uh, analysis was an investigation docu uh, documentation by a Russian police during investigation. 
and we have such results and uh, you see uh, that Ukrainians were not majority, maybe one fourth of all uh, members of such organizations. Very interesting that uh, only uh, two persons from 208, it's a general number of uh, uh, cases I studied, I have studied, uh, said about themselves that they are Cossacks by origin. Other no, Ukrainians or uh, Little Russians, Great Russians and uh, Jews. Also, a very interesting fact is that when we speak about social profile of Ukrainian anarchists at that time, only 45% of them uh, start their revolutionary activity or united to the uh, anarchist organizations in a uh, place where they were born. 55 percent, it's the first generation of inhabitants of concrete city and only after migration, after going to this place of working or life, they united to anarchist organization. When we speak about uh, professional affiliation, we have such results, you see that uh, uh, in Soviet times, traditionally, uh, it was a stereotype, maybe, uh, that uh, anarchism, traditionally non-workers people, because all workers were under impact of uh, Bolshevik uh, wing of social democracy, but in reality, uh, majority of uh, Ukrainian anarchism, they are very workers. And we have another, another, another uh, results. And please note the uh, uh, number of peasants. It's also very important when we go uh, uh, forward with this topic, only 4% of them. Also, a few words about, uh, about, uh, about uh, educational level. So, also, only a few persons have a high educational, traditionally, the majority of them has elementary education <coughs> and were literate, so in tradition they could make signature in, uh, uh, during the investigation and for police it's, it was a confirmation that he, is, he or she is a, is a literate. Uh, when we speak about he and she and when we speak about gender, 89% of all members were men, so only 11% were uh, women. And uh, when we speak about uh, documentation, when we speak about uh, political propaganda, and when we speak about uh, images of this propaganda of uh, Ukrainian anarchism, we speak about a uh, specific style, specific language, and specific uh, images. Uh, the analysis of on propaganda materials published and distributed by anarchist groups let us to say about uh, main recipients of the agitation. They highline one group and this group they called uh, people of labor or working people. It's a general group and traditionally in majority of cases they appealed to this group. Sometimes in some cases this uh, address uh, could be changed, for example, to peasants, to soldiers, to recruits, and it depends on concrete case when anarchism st anarchists start their agitation work. Uh, the style and language of the materials also vary depending on audience. For example, uh, the text of proclamations Peasants and Workers, 1905, similar to the style of folk epics and fairy tales where anarchy is compared uh, to the red sun in Russian uh, Krasna Solnishka. Instead, the roots of social injustice and origins of Russian autocracy are defined as the consequences of Mongol Tatar domination. Uh, quotation in Russian, Tsari uh, Zavila Tatarshina, start of this. Uh, monarchy was a time of Tatarian. When we speak about language, uh, 
majority of uh, materials, majority of leaflets uh, were in Russian, sometimes in Yiddish, and mostly these proclamations in Yiddish were published not on territory of uh, south of Ukraine, but mostly abroad, for example, in Great Britain, in London, first of all, and on the territory of Grodno province in Bialystok. Uh, choice of language was, first of all, for auditory, and when anarchists uh, saw that uh, majority of auditory are Jews, they tried to, to, to speak with them by their native tongue and uh, another situation. But in the uh, case of agitation in Ukrainian villages, uh, during for a long period, uh, anarchists used Russian language. Only in 1907, they changed their uh, own tactic and tried to do a lot of materials in, Malara in Little Russian or in Ukrainian language. And uh, very interesting that uh, on territory on, of Yekaterinoslav Governorate or Yekaterinoslav Province was only one group who, which published all the materials in uh, Little Russian or in Ukrainian language. We speak about it uh, later, a bit later. But when we speak about uh, Cossacks motifs, uh, they were but very specific non-traditional Cossacks, and uh, it, uh, I mean it Cossacks which were contemporary to anarchism. Cossacks as a, a one of the um, force who supported monarchy. Cossacks who fought against revolutionary. So this Cossacks or Kazaki has negative image. And only in one case we meet the situation when anarchists appeal to a Cossacks, first of all to the Parisian Cossacks, as their ancestors. In other cases, the main audience, when we speak about Malo-Russian uh, Malo uh, or Little Russian proclamation, were peasants. This, uh, this uh, case, it's a case of Hulai Pole, and this is the case of an uh, uh, organization which was founded in, in 1906 called Union of Poor Farmers, or maybe uh, in uh, Ukrainian Spilka Bidny Hliborobiv. This organization uh, has two leaders, and this organization for, uh, for us and for many people in Ukraine nowadays is famous for the fact that member of this organization was Nestor Makhno during 1906 till 1909. But these organizations who has two leaders, very important and very interesting uh, uh, persons of these leaders. One of the leaders on this photo is uh, Volodymyr or Valdemar Antony, son of a Czech and a German, uh, German uh, woman. He was born in Hulai Pole. He united to revolutionary activity in age of 15 as a member of social democratic uh, circle in Yekaterinoslav, then continue this activity as a social revolutionary and then go forward to the position of anarchism. He became a founder of this organization. Another leader, unfortunately, he was not on this photo. This photo was uh, made on the 1st of May 1907 in uh, photography Yevin Zone. It's uh, one of the owners of this photography in Hulai Pole. Another leader was Alexander Semenucha, who was born in Hulai Pole, and he was, in time of foundation of this organization, he was a deserter from a uh, Russian army. One of the uh, leaflet to all members and to peasants, you are descendants of Zaporizhian Cossacks. He said, you are grandsons of Zaporizhian Cossacks. And this appearing was in case when he asked them to fight against uh, representatives of uh, 
local members of Union of Russian People. It's only one, uh, one case which I studied when we have direct, uh, direct connection with the uh, image of, um, of Cossacks. When uh, we tried to explain why, why such uh, opinion, maybe we can uh, go forward in uh, two directions. First of all, Hulaipola as a town. Hulaipola is a microcosm. That, uh, this town was founded in the end of 18th century and uh, a lot of uh, inhabitants even in uh, the middle of 20th century, even in the end of uh, 20th century, uh, said about Cossack origin of this city. Even now, if you go to Hulaipola, you can ask inhabitants and they say to you that some uh, districts of this town called hundreds, sotni, because it was founded as a settlement for different uh, different inhabitants and Virbiska, Buchkovska and other uh, hundreds or sotni. Um, very interesting that uh, Ukrainian or little Russian uh, character of this organization was recognized even by Russian police because during, uh, during uh, interrogation of uh, Volodymyr Antony, local policeman Karachintsev, uh, he also was a member of uh, Union of uh, um, Russian People, asked uh, Volodymyr Antony that give me please your uh, little Russians, but not Ru little Russians, directly quotation was uh, uh, he, he tried to highlight this, uh, this uh, because proclamations were in Ukrainian language. I, I think I suppose about this. Uh, also, uh, Nestor Makhno, in his French period, wrote short biography of himself, and he wrote few words about uh, his mother, and he said that uh, my mother have told me about Cossack origin of Hulai Pole and about Cossack origin of my family. Despite the fact that uh, we know that his father, for example, his father, for example, was from a family of a serfdom. We don't know exactly about his Cossack, uh, Cossack origin, but he noticed it, and very interesting, he noticed about uh, his, uh, his uh, Cossack origin in time when he, he speak only in Russian and highlight that after I was arrested uh, in 1908, 1909, I stopped speaking uh, in uh, Ukrainian. I think it's very interesting to mention that majority of members of this anarchist group were at the same time of actors of a major theater in uh, Hulaipole. They played in a uh, theatre, uh, they played in this amateur dramatic circle, uh, uh, which was organized on Kerner's uh, uh, plant. It's very interesting because the son of owner of this plant, son of owner of this factory, was a Jew, Grigory Kerner, or Grigory Kernerenko. A Jew who wrote poems in Ukrainian. Jew who became one of the um, one of the examples, as uh, Professor uh, Petrovsky Stern said, uh, anti-imperial choice. It, it means about uh, Kernerenko. Kernerenko was the organizer of this of this uh, theater. At the same time, he was the author for some dramas for this theater. But the main uh, the main uh, figure in this theater was Yelisei Karpenko or his pseudo Oleg uh, uh, Aizovsky. He wrote a lot of uh, dramas for this theater and he was a um, main actor of it. Very interesting that maybe the, the most famous terroristic action against police, against Karachinsov, men who 
uh, investigated case of Union of Poor Farmers was in theatre. And it was after a uh, drama Sava Chali uh, by the no by the no by the drama by uh, Nikola Kostomarov. It's also a very interesting uh, fact. And neighbor in a uh, theater hall was uh, was Grigory Kernerenko. After this drama, members of anarchist group killed uh, uh, Karachin. So, oh, sorry. It's, uh, it's uh, actors, among them are also uh, uh, members of, of such group. And you see, uh, this photo is uh, after, after play uh, Stop Tisic by Karpen Kokari. And this quote uh, is very interesting. Uh, as a conclusion, uh, however, in general, we can say that this episodic manifestation of Cossack sentiments in the practice of Kulaipori revolutionaries were the exception to the ruler of practice of Ukrainian anarchists. They mainly focused on all Russian revolutionary movement, internationality in fight for social liberation, and with a little uh, or no articulation of the national questions. Cossack halo of Ukrainian anarchism or as the anarchist of Ukraine in our opinion, is a product of later period, one of the attempts to explain the Machno phenomenon without going beyond the Ukrainian National Revolution. But in conclusion, I would to enter to the territory of my colleague by panel and to go forward to small city Kamienske, from, from a name of it was Dnipro-Dzerzhinsk, it's nearby uh, Yekaterinoslav. And he was a very interesting, uh, very interesting situation that in 1905, one of the members of local uh, union of um, uh, Russian people was murdered. And in uh, obituary, in honor of the dead, uh, authors of this obituary wrote about anarchists and about uh, about members of Union of Russian People. They wrote that members of Union of Russian People are, are real uh, ancestors of the Parisian Cossacks. Instead, anarchists try or make attempts to campaign uh, and to interpret it solely uh, as the Jews who tried to mislead Malorossian peasants, who tried to speak in Ukrainian and who tried to be a Cossacks, but they were Jews. And this image of Jews who covered by a little Russian language and little Russian rhetoric by the mind of uh, Union of Russian people was very characteristic. Thank you for your time.